Okay, so we recently got the M1 Mac Mini after all that hype and it kind of underperformed for our expectation. So what do you do next? Well, we got the MacBook Air M1 just to find out if it's as good as how internet claim it to be. And here's a TLDR version. Well, this is one of the best MacBook Apple has ever made, especially in the Air series. Yes, the hype is real. Now, one of the best summary of this MacBook could be, usually you have a task in mind that you want to execute on your laptop, but with most laptop, there is a lag. But with this new M1 Mac, there is no lag between the task you have in your mind and the execution. It's like this Mac doesn't even exist in between. That being said, there are a few shortcomings here and there, which we will talk about in this video. With that said, let's begin. Now, this is a simple review on how MacBook Air M1 performs on day-to-day -day basis. I will be focusing less on specs and benchmark and more on how efficiently this device performs in day-to-day -day tasks. On that note, let me give you an example of how my typical day looks like with this MacBook Air. Now, I usually have 4 to 5 desktop open. Irrespective of what computer I am using, I spend almost all day running multiple applications. Applications like Slack, Trello, WhatsApp, Notion, etc. They usually run in all-in-one messenger app. Next, I have Google Chrome with multiple tabs as my primary browser. I also go live with this computer in our SNL as well as use Google Meet to take video calls. So yeah, webcam, mic and speakers are very important these days. Next up, we also use M1 occasionally for video editing on Final Cut Pro and at TechWiser, we have heavy video editing and not just one or two 4K clips. And finally, since it's work from home, I often find myself working from various locations in the house, sometimes from a garden, sometimes from home office and sometimes even from a cafe. So yeah, portability and battery life is an important factor for me. And to summarize, my workflow typically consists of a lot of multitasking, that too with heavy application. I also need good webcam and mic and portability and battery life. So if my workflow matches your workflow, then this video is for you. With that said, let's start with quick unboxing. In the box, you get the typical M1 MacBook with 8 gigs of RAM and 250 gigs of storage. The design is same as previous generation MacBook, and the display is 2K, and it will cost you somewhere around 93,000 rupees. You also get a small charger and a Type C to Type C cable. More on that soon. Okay, so with unboxing out of the way, let's start with the review video. Now, I have taken some notes of my experience with this MacBook Air from day 1 to day 5. So, I'm gonna go with the same order and you will have a better idea of how the product actually feels like in day-to-day -day use. So, let's do this. Okay, so the first thing I did after booting this Mac is I installed all the application I had on my previous Mac. Now, these are the regular apps such as Slack, Trello, WhatsApp, Notion, etc. I also installed Google Chrome and some other photo editing apps like Photoshop and of course Final Cut Pro. Also, just to push the limit, I installed Windows 10 on parallel. And here's something interesting I noticed from day one. It has been two months since this M1 was released, so pretty much all applications are now compatible with M1 chip. In fact, even Google just released the Chrome for M1. And even if it's not compatible with M1, you can still run the old Intel apps on the new M1 using the tech called Rosetta 2, which from a user perspective is no different. For example, apps like Photoshop or even third-party VPN apps that was made for Intel Mac will work on this new M1 right out of the box. So yeah, app compatibility is never going to be an issue for most of your people out there. And even if it does happen sometimes, well, the developers are constantly updating their software for this M1 chip. So yeah, the future of app compatibility on M1 is really bright. Okay, so the first day was spent mostly on installing application. And it wasn't until the second day I really started testing this device. And the first thing I noticed is speed. Yes, this MacBook M1 is really, really fast. Right from installing application to juggling between them, it never fails. Now, here are a couple of interesting things that I noticed and captured throughout the day. Let me show you. The first thing I noticed is the Touch ID seems pretty fast compared to the old MacBook Pro. And second, again, the wake up time of this new M1 is far better than the previous MacBook Pro. 
and third in any regular day i have multiple chrome tabs open taking video calls on side and i use this messenger app called stack which includes apps like trello notion slack and whatsapp all of them works at the same time and i constantly switch between them and i have not seen any drop in performance even in my old macbook pro there was a slight delay when i switch between the application but in this new macbook m1 there is no lag now there are a couple of reasons why this m1 is so fast partly because of the new m1 chip and also because of the fact that the ssd in this one is twice as fast compared to the previous generation now i will leave a link to a very good detail article in the description of this video but in general i'm not much of a specs or a benchmark kind of a person and my point here is i do see a lot of drastic result in day to day performance in this macbook air m1 and it's a really a good thing Okay so in the first couple of days I did notice that this M1 can run pretty much any application you throw at it without a complaint but run it efficiently as well and here's another major difference that I noticed in the first couple of days battery backup okay so this M1 has pretty much the same size compared to the previous generation and even then it delivers 15 to 20 hours of battery backup after single charge thanks to the superior optimization of hardware and software in the new M1 chip and this battery backup also comes with certain perks for example during work from home i'm working from several places in my house sometimes from the home office sometimes from the living room sofa and sometimes during the winters i also go out in the sun and work from there this means no matter where i am working from i don't need a charging point near me also the charger is small on this new macbook air and yet it takes the same amount of time to charge it compared to the previous generation mac also considering the fact that most macbook carry case on amazon are compact a small charger is an added bonus and finally even if you forgot to bring your charger when you are on the move your mac can easily last one or two days so far i have used this m1 for journal tasks like installing various applications multitasking portability battery etc and it has outperformed my expectation in every possible way but what about the most hype thing about this macbook yes the performance can it edit videos on fcp and to be honest i was a little bit doubtful here see we purchased a mac mini to edit tech wise videos but it has under deliver from our expectation so i really wanted to check if this macbook air can edit tech wise videos well in our case the final cut performance is same in both m1 macbook air and m1 mac mini The only difference we could find is that the MacBook Air has a slightly better performance due to the 2K display. In our testing both of them can edit two or three layers of 4K videos without any complaint. But the moment you add five to six layers of 4K videos with color grading and effects etc, both of them becomes unresponsive. I mean you still be able to complete the project but the experience won't be flawless. So yeah, this MacBook Air is sufficient for all the regular work, but in our experience, it still cannot do the professional video editing. So far, this MacBook has outperformed in all the tasks except the video editing. But then again, no device is perfect, and this is no exception. This MacBook also has some shortcomings. Four actually. So the first shortcoming, or should I say, nitpicking, is that the new M1 MacBook has the same design as the previous generation. So it's hard to tell apart the Intel and M1 MacBook side by side. I was hoping to see some difference just to make me feel good, but that being said, at least they have bring back the old keyboard and thankfully there is no touch bar in the MacBook Air. We have the old MacBook Pro and it's very fragile. So much so that we have to think twice while carrying it outdoors. Thankfully I get more confidence when I hold the M1 Air. The second shortcoming is in the 720p webcam. As some of you know, we go live on YouTube during our SNL, and a 1080p would have been much needed, especially during work from home times when everyone can utilize a good webcam. Now, my problem here is Apple had a lot of time to improve in this area, but they didn't. That said, I'm still happy that the webcam on the new M1 MacBook Air is much better compared to the same camera we had on MacBook Pro previous generation. And the third shortcoming is that the experience of running mobile apps on this new M1 simply sucks. Yes, while there are some applications that are available for you to download on the Mac via App Store, however, these mobile apps are still not very well optimized for the bigger screen. Hopefully, Apple will fix that in future. And my final complaint is that you cannot run Boot Camp on this new M1 MacBook just like you did in the previous Intel-based Mac. 
So sometimes when I have to test Windows application for a video topic, well, I cannot do that in this one. But hey, thankfully you can run Windows 10 ARM version using Parallels new software and it runs perfectly fine. Okay, so time for final verdict. Well, this MacBook Air M1 is really, really powerful for general tasks like heavy browsing, Photoshop, programming, multitasking with multiple applications. This can take all of them very easily. So the question is, should you buy this MacBook Air M1 or should you wait for M1X? Well, in our experience, this MacBook Air M1 offers way more value for money compared to Mac Mini or even MacBook Pro. It's blazingly fast, has a great battery life and there's no issue with app compatibility, which I was a little skeptical about in the beginning. So yeah, go for it without a doubt. That being said, it's still worth pointing out that this cannot edit TechWiser level of videos, which basically includes 4 to 5 layer of 4K footage and color grading, etc. So for that, maybe you want to wait for M1X, which is a faster version of M1 and is expected to launch somewhere in June 2021. But for regular people with regular needs, this is more than sufficient and to get it. Highly recommend it. That being said, this is Minar signing off. Let me know how is your experience with this M1 if you have bought any and I will see you in the next one.